Hello, welcome back to another pen talk. And we're on a roll. We've been on a roll for a while. So I just received these four pens today. Uh, some of my viewers recommended the pens, and I also noticed them on eBay, and it was a great price for a four pack of more piston filled Chinese pens. They may look very familiar to you. And if they do, there's a reason for that. Because they mimic this pen, the Twisby Eco. In fact, they mimic it fairly well. We're going to put them through their paces, but I thought we would just do a quick view now that we have some great sunlight coming in. So let's look at the red one. We have a logo, an interesting logo on the clip. We have the brand of the pen on the cap, which is an interesting uh, new twist. We also have a logo embedded in the top of the cap and the cap finial. So let's go to the green one and you'll see that that's a red insert doesn't show up as much on the red pen so let's go to the green one kind of like a lime green kind of an intense green nice cap band at the bottom nothing written on it and then you have your piston turning knob which has the same facets that the cap does which is also familiar and the other thing we have is we have a designation of the pen model the 3059 and then the logo again it's an unscrew cap is what you would expect you know, you have your O-ring here and your O-ring at the top, very reminiscent of the Twisby Eco. But the feed and section are different, clear. And we have the Lamy style nib. So the Chinese pens seem to come in three varieties now. You have your Lamy style wing nib, which slips on and off easily. So obviously you could replace these with a lot of Lamy nibs. The nib's going to cost more than these four pens cost, but that's the, the Lamy nib for you. Um, piston goes up and down. You don't even notice it or feel it. So that's going to have a grading capacity in there like you would expect. The other thing, since I play around with this more than I did before, this just unscrews. And the whole thing comes out. You know, you have your facets here, which fit into facets at the top of the barrel, which work the piston, and then you just screw it back on. You know, you can put the piston down, get that ring nice and tight, and then your piston works great. And the design is also nice because you notice that piston goes all the way up to the top. You don't have to worry about adjusting it or putting it back together again and, and it having it not work the way you would like. So the other two are just white and black, which are reminiscent of uh, Twisby Eco. They come in those two colors. Again, the common design elements. Right away, you know, the plastic feels good. It feels as good as the plastic used in the Twisby. Construction seems nice. I mean, not quite as as that substantial feel that the Twisby does, and I don't think too many people would say the Twisby has a substantial feel, but it's it's a little bit, yeah, it's weighs about the same. We'll give you those weights. The dimensions are the same, so we're going to ink up one of these and put nib to paper and uh, see how it writes. But it's definitely going to be interesting because here you have a transparent section, and, of course, this is now a one-piece section which the Eco pretty much started. So this one's going to have a slightly different look to it. So it was very difficult to get the cap off. I had to use my grippers. And it looks like there was some residue left inside the cap, which kind of sealed it up. Don't know if that's kind of like glue with the cap liner. We don't have any clear cap, so uh, 
it looks like it's interesting. Also, I'm going to bring in my light. You notice there's a nice Phillips screw there at the top of the cap. Doesn't look like there's any cap liner in there, but so if you need to take this apart, it's easy to take apart. I assume when you remove that, the clip will come out. So uh, interesting feature. Can't imagine the machine that puts these things together. I thought the white one might show it off better, but uh, definitely no cap liner there. So if that screw's not airtight, then uh, who knows how long these nibs will hold up, but we'll give it a test and we'll give it a see how they work over time. Thought we should take a look at the inside of the cap of the Twisby Eco. So hopefully you can see down there that there's an actual nut holding the assembly there and there is a cap liner so that's one of the differences between the pens. Pen completely disassembled. It's extremely easy to take apart. No tools required. And I know I've been occasionally mixing up the Lamy style and the Pilot style nibs but uh, this is definitely the Lamy style. And there's the feed that goes along with that and the nib just slides on. It's secure. The barrel's one piece, like the Eco. It has facets on the section. There's three of them, so it's kind of like the, the Lamy design, but not quite as severe. At the top of the barrel you'll see those facets in there which are what the piston filling mechanism uses to raise and lower the piston. So I put silicone grease on the threads. So these threads have silicone grease on and I also put silicone grease on both of these. They're not really O-rings because this piston is one piece but those rings there that are meant to uh, you know draw the ink up you know this easily goes into the barrel and what I would do is extend it all the way down and then you can see the threads here on this silver ring so it's very easy to thread it and as you thread it it comes up but then you can just lower it again and thread it until those are tight and now the piston as you can see goes all the way up it, it's insensitive you don't have to worry about where you position things you're always going to get a, a full piston draw which I think is a great engineering design certainly something that other manufacturers should follow that when you take them apart uh, you have to work sometimes to get that piston to come all the way up and to get a full fill and of course the cap is the cap so that's it so in the early days before silicone grease was more common I just bought this jar of silicone, pure silicone grease, which cost uh, less than 10 bucks on Amazon. And I use this. I like it because it's really like a grease. So it's not as liquidy or as uh, fluid as some of the um, silicone grease like that's in these converters here. You can see that bubble rise up there, kind of like a lava lump. When I had this, before I took the pen apart, I did my normal flush of the feed and nib with you know, a little ammonia, a little detergent. So I'm pretty certain this pen is all cleared up, all greased up, ready to go. So now we're going to put an ink in it. So the feed and nib assembly just slide in one way. It's keyed. So, you know, the way this thing takes, uh, take it apart and put it together again, it's relatively easy. You don't have to worry about where you position everything because there's only one way for it to put back together again. This is the ink that we're going to use. I think it's a perfect ink for the color of this pen. You know, it's part of my art ink, ink art collection that Robert Oster that I got. So I think we need to watch this ink saturate the feed and bring color and life to this transparent pen. So that's a pretty intense light green. I am into now the chromatography with all my ink. So here it is. There's a thin layer of very 
pure green at the top and then most of it's yellow. So that's uh, interesting. Let's see how it looks on, on paper. So we're going to put the piston all the way down to the bottom. We'll show you how much you get on the first draw. That pulls up quite a bit. I mean, all of the Chinese piston filling pens that I've gotten recently have been very easy to fill. That's really a nice color there. And, and as I mentioned to you before, I'm going to do a second fill because I like to just use the ink as kind of like a flushing media and to make certain that everything is really saturated only with ink. So I cleaned this pen pretty well before. This is all I'm going to do. As you can see, that's almost a full fill. You know, we could turn it upside down, force out the air, and get a 100% fill, but I think that's good enough to get us started. So for the writing sample, we're going to compare the Lombato 3059 with the Twisby Eco. Here we have the Wingsung 3008 and also the 659 I think it is yes so I wanted to compare extra fine fine and two fines and show you how they write so like the eco this pen fits fine in the hand it's a good size and those little facets on the section actually feel okay. It posts securely. Got to put it on the right way. And it doesn't come off, but it feels loose, I guess because of the way it snaps on. And the cap easily turns, but that doesn't turn the piston knob at all. So for those of you that want a secure cap, I mean, when you're writing, you're not going to notice it. And it doesn't change the balance, so this is a pen you can write with either cap, either posted or unposted. This is a light ink, and it does lay down a decent amount, and a little bit of pressure on the downstrokes puts out a little bit more ink in a slightly wider line, but certainly not a soft nib by any stretch of the imagination. It is smooth. I mean, you can see the difference between a lot of pressure and just a little pressure. This is an interesting ink. It's a lighter ink than I usually would use, but the color is pretty intense, so I like the color. So you might ask, how does this compare against the original Twisby Eco? So this is the Eco. That nib is definitely wider. And you can still get a little bit more on a downstroke, so a little bit of pressure. And one of the things, like I mentioned, I've had this pen for over a year now, and it writes all the time, first time, incredibly consistent. I've never had to do anything with the ink to prime it or to get it to go, and this is after letting it set for a long time. And this nib is very, very smooth. Much smoother than uh, the Lambito. But it's a different nib because it's a little bit wider. This probably is a medium, at least it's writing like a medium. And this is Iro Shizuku Mojito um, ink, which I love. is a, is a nice red, a little bit on the pink side, but it, it's still a nice red. So how does that compare with a Wing Sung Fine? And as you can see, this is also that Lamy style.
So this also lays down a nice patch of ink, and it's it's you know a thicker line than you're going to get from the nib in the Alambito. But since these are Lamy style nibs, you can easily swap it out with a Lamy style nib if you have one. I think you can kind of see how those lines are different. Both pens have their own advantages. Um, I like the feel. This pen is the uh, the 580 clone. You know, the 3008. It just feels really nice in the hand. It has decent weight to it. The Eco and the 3059, the weights are almost identical at about 22 and a half to 23 grams. So you're not going to get a lot of variation there. So just to put things in perspective, here's your extra fine point. This is your pilot design extra fine. This is in the 659. So this is extra fine. And I think you can easily see that that is definitely a finer line. I learned to enjoy this pen. It wasn't my best writing experience when I first tried it, but it is consistent. Um, it's good on, on cheaper paper because you're not going to get any, any bleed through or feathering because it doesn't lay down a lot of ink, but it is a consistent writer. Uh, one of the things you'll notice is that the um, the paint, the silver paint is starting to wear off on the bottom of the cap, which is, you know, not quite as durable as on this, uh, the Pilot 78G. So that was a, a review of another interesting Chinese pen that I think has its place in, in some people's collections. You know, it, it writes well, it holds a lot of ink, it's an interesting design, it comes in some nice colors. It's certainly not in the same class as the Eco from, from my perspective, but, you know, for the price, you know, about under four bucks, I mean, how can you beat it? So, uh, thank you for watching. May you have any great writing experiences, explore inks, pens, and paper. Enjoy every day to its fullest. Until later, bye.